our healer. You're our redeemer. You're our rescuer. Father, you changed our lives.
Hello and welcome everybody. Happy Father's Day to all the amazing men out there. I'm doing a special service today. I got some squads with me. We thick up in here, y'all. And I wanted to do something different because 
we're living in different times. You know, now is not the time to just do, for me, a message as usual. People are looking for answers. And so I got some amazing men here with me and some men that I've had one-on-ones with that we've talked about our children with. But this will be one of the first times that we've talked as men and as fathers, as a group, together. And, I, and our desire today is really to help you, you men, and even you women who are listening. But our desire really is to give you some answers, some knowledge, some encouragement, some strength, and some comfort, because Lord knows we as men need it today. And so I have with me, to my right, your left, at the end, Ron saying, Pastor Giles Patterson, to my immediate left, Pastor Timothy McMurtry. What up, though? And on my immediate left, my brethren, my partner, T. Shep, Todd Shepard. Good morning. So listen, let's get into this, you guys. You know, there is a lot of information that's going out right now, and a lot of it has been given to our children. Again, we're, we're talking to, to fathers. Today is Father's Day. But a lot has been given to our children that we haven't had the ability to filter. We haven't had the ability to talk to them about before they take it in. And by the time we kind of hear about they have it, they, they may be already acting or it's already reacted in their bodies, in their minds, in their psyches. And, you know, there's a lot of things that are out there that we just didn't, we didn't have that when we were coming up. You know, Daniel... 12 and 4 says this, that uh, in the last days that knowledge will increase. I understand that there is a lot more knowledge out there, and it is. Knowledge has increased. But what I'm seeing is it's not so much the quantity, because they're getting that, but it's the quality of knowledge. That seems to have decreased, mm -hmm. because now, versus you searching and learning on your own, you're taking Google's opinion. You're taking Bing's opinion. You're taking Facebook or Instagram. You're taking someone else's opinion versus you learning for yourself, you talking and sharpening yourself with someone else and getting knowledge that's a quality of knowledge and really getting some good answers. And my children, for instance, man, they live on Google. Let, let, let me Google that. Let me see what YouTube says about that. Really? You, you're not going to figure that out for yourself? You know, and so our voice is so important in their lives. It's never been more vital for us as fathers to speak up and to speak out like now. Proverbs 3, uh, 1 through 4 in the Amplified says this. For my son... Do not forget my teachings, but let your heart keep my commandments. So don't just keep them in your head, son. Let them get into your heart because if they're in their heart, your heart, they'll become a part of you. Verse 2 says, because if you do this, length of days and of life, I'm sorry, length of days and years of life worth living and tranquility and prosperity, which is the wholeness of life's blessings, they will add to you. Verse 3 says, and don't let mercy and kindness and truth leave you. Instead, let these qualities define you. Mm -hmm. Bind them securely around your neck and write them on the tablets of your heart. For verse 4, so you find favor and esteem in the sight of God and men. Going back to verse 2, for length of days and years of life worth living and tranquility and prosperity, the wholeness of life's blessing, they will add to you. Whose mouth are the, is that in? This is, he said, my son. Which means, as a father, this is what's in my mouth that can help our children get to a better place, live a better. You want to live a life worth living? Listen to what I'm telling you, if I'm giving you the word of God. Mm -hmm. Because that to me seems like there is such a huge battle between you giving your kids the word of God and the world trying to say, don't push your religion on me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
That's a good, that's a good point. I think that fundamentally the importance of fathers is that fathers give children identity. No when doubt. Child comes out, takes on the father's name. Right. A lot of the characteristics and things like that come from the father. I think it's in Proverbs 17 and I believe in 6 talks about, you know, children are, matter of fact, I think I might have it here somewhere. It, it talks about children's children are the glory of old men and the right. glory of children are their fathers. Right. So when you have a father that's not there, there's a certain identity, there's a certain lostness that the child has because they don't have a reference point of who they are. So the voice of fathers fundamentally is important because it gives identity to children. And we come into times like this where you have many voices in what is the so-called information age, that voice has to be there as a stabilizing force. Now the Bible talks about training up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it. So even if a child might be resistant apparently to what the father is saying, I don't want to hear that, you old school dad, blah, 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 the seed is still gone in there. And I think the, another piece to that, now let other cats get in a, a word edgewise, is that it's not just what we teach our children, it's what example we put in front of them as well. Because some things are taught, other things are caught. No doubt. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. if the father can just be there as a presence, there are some things that supernaturally happen just because that's daddy doing that. And there's a connection that even other voices can't override, even right. if the child temporarily is acting foolishness because there's, you know, foolishness bound in the heart of a child, right. ride a correction and drive it far from them. So for the message for fathers then is just be present in your child's life because there is voice, there is example, there is identity that they can't get from any place else but from the father. Right. And even in the Old Testament, the father's job was to release the blessing on the children. Mm -hmm. That was his job. How do I bless you if I'm not there? Right. And, you know, I remember when my dad died. Um, again, I was raised by my mom mm -hmm. uh, alone. And I remember when my dad died. This is, again, I didn't spend time with him. My dad, uh, Irvin Henderson uh, Sr., he was a part of the instrumental part of writing grants to start OIC mm -hmm. back in the day. And what is OIC for the listeners? Uh, I forgot what the, what the acronym is. I think you know that acronym. It is Opportunities Incorporated for Communities or something like that. Yeah, something like Community that. Community-based organization for but it was Milwaukee area people. But it was summer jobs for the kids, for the youth, and, and he was a, uh, instrumental in writing grants for, a, for thousands of kids having summer jobs. He was also instrumental in uh, being a part of starting the Warning Basketball League. Wow. So my dad was doing all this stuff in the community, out there doing it, but spending no time with me. Mm. And so when my dad died, because I wasn't used to him being around, at first, and again, he died when I was an adult. It didn't affect me really. I'm like, I didn't see him, but you know, once every other year anyway. So it wasn't a big deal. But then something spiritually hit me that made me sink. And it was like, but he didn't release the blessing. Mm -hmm. But he didn't give me identity. Mm -hmm. But he didn't tell me who I was supposed to be. He didn't tell me how to carry on the Henderson name. Yeah. He didn't tell me how Hendersons are supposed to act, carry themselves, what we do and what we don't do. So I'm now trying to figure this out, even as an adult. I was, always, I was already trying to figure it out as a young man. But now as an adult, I'm trying to figure it out, and I'm raising kids. Right, right. I'm being a husband. And I'm going, God. And, and, and if, I could be out, if I could be honest, there was such an overwhelming feeling of the fact that now the buck stops with me. Facts. I don't, I don't have anybody I can go to and say, hey, I don't have anybody I can talk to. And so, you know, I, I winged it. Let's just be honest. You know, and that's where a lot of fathers, we're winging it, you know, and we have to make sure. And, and, and because of that, I made sure what I didn't have, I was going to be for my children. 
Amen. I'm, I made sure of that. I made sure that the events I'm, I'm at, I made sure that we have conversations, we have family meetings. We, we do that stuff on a regular basis, not just when there's issues, but I talk to you in the good times and the bad times. Right. I'm giving you wisdom or I'm giving you my thoughts, my understanding, my idea. And really, I'm giving you God's because I really don't have my own. Amen. You know? Amen. And with that said, Pastor Skip, you know, one thing that we deal with in our community is um, uh, the loss of fatherhood. Yeah, no and doubt. And the reasons that we have loss of father in our community is because of death, yeah. uh, imprisonment, yeah. and also absenteeism. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So in order for you to do what you just said, Pastor mm -hmm. Skip, in order for you to say, hey, based on my loss, mm -hmm. this is what I have to do. And what I found is in First Timothy, uh, the, I'm sorry, First Corinthians 4 and 15, it says, even if you have 10,000 guides to Christ, you do not have many fathers. Right. For in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. Right. So as you became, uh, 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 you know, in, uh, as you allowed Christ in your life, then you had that identity right. that Pastor Tim just spoke of. Okay, you, you didn't have a reference point, but now you have one. Because he said you became a, a, he became a father to you through the gospel. Right. And I think that's what our community needs because, you know, my wife uh, had put something on Facebook uh, celebrating my birthday, and she was just uh, really blessing me based on... Um, sharing her thoughts but then once I one thing I read she said he's a good father to many mm -hmm. well I got two sons mm -hmm. right right but I do not neglect the responsibility of how others may look at me and gain some identity right right you know, you know so what do we do we imitate Christ mm -hmm. right follow right. me as I follow Christ and I think that's one thing in order to save our community if you will mm -hmm. is to make sure that we don't uh become absentee mm -hmm. you know, right. in that responsibility, Amen. that we take on that responsibility. We have my for one no more, right? Right, right. You know, but, but it's, it's, it goes well beyond that because now that we are imitators of Christ, we have to be able to share that gospel so they, then they can gain an identity for themselves. And then maybe we can stop seeing some of this foolishness yeah. that yeah. we see. Yeah. We cast blame often, but right. I think we should then really say, you know what, it's not... They may have a whole, a, lot, a whole lot of things that they missed in their life, but I, I need to step up somewhere. Yeah. Hey, man, that, that's, I'm kind of like you, Pastor Skip, because I grew up uh, just me and my brother, single mom, yeah. in the home and in the projects. Right. And uh, dad was not there. And just being able to have an outlet of going to the Silver Spring Neighborhood Center yeah. and having a surrogate father as Bobby Ricardo, one of the Milwaukee's legends, right. uh, took me under his wing, but he, he showed me how to, to dress. He taught me how to drive. Mm -hmm. he, he was there and he brought me my uh, first outfit for my prom, mm -hmm. but I didn't see him in a house setting as a father. Right. And so when I started having kids, uh, I didn't know how to father them. No, no. I, I was really, I was an absentee dad. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I got grown and I came to Christ that I, I got all my kids together mm -hmm. and, and apologized to them and mm -hmm. repented yeah. that I wasn't there and I didn't know how to do this thing. But if we can start right here. So now I'm having these conversations that I should have had when they were younger. I'm having these conversations now mm -hmm. as they are adults. Right. And, and just yesterday I had... All, most of my kids at my house yesterday having a good time, having a conversation and um, me and Tanya who her son is, I say my son, I don't say stepdad right. or nothing like that, but he, he made a statement, he says the reason why I love Todd is because I see the way he treats my mom uh -huh. and when he talks I listen because I see the integrity that he walks in Wow. And that that spoke volumes to me because now I say I'm, I'm able to express this to grown men and grown women now. Right. And they're getting it right. of how I walk. The Bible says if a if a man walks in integrity, 
the blessings of his children are after them. Uh, right. uh, Proverbs 20 and 7, I think that is. And so I just try to right now, even though I didn't have that model, I try to go to God and see what do I do with the grown kids that I have now and the conversations that I've missed. How can I reinvent those conversations that they can start walking in this day? Yeah, I think that's real powerful, Pastor Todd. And I think the, the, the biggest lesson is that it's never too late to start. Yes. Right. You know, you don't not become a father anymore when the children are grown and you're not only a father when they're little. So once you come into the knowledge, when we know better, we can we can do better. One quick shout out. The uh, OIC is Opportunities Industrialization Center. Thank you, <laughs> Carla, for letting us know. God bless you. <laughs> but, but as far as fatherhood is concerned, it, it doesn't it doesn't turn off. And I think that, you know, as we get older, part of the reason why we can appreciate it more is that we have a little bit more lived experience. You know, yes, when sir. I was growing yes, up, sir. my dad was always there, uh, grew up household. We weren't necessarily always close, but the older I got, the closer we got. I had an older cousin that told me one time, I was about 19-ish or so. You know, become a teenager, you kind of think you know a little bit, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 I know what's up, you ain't gotta tell me nothing. And he called me to the side and he was like, hey man, don't look at your dad as just your father. Look at him as a man. And that was really profound because it helped me to see that there are dimensions to <laughs> your dad, your father. There's some stuff right. that goes on that he deals with that you know not of. Right. Not that he was trying to not disclose it to you, but more it was like it was a shield. Right. So you didn't have to take those arrows that he took. And so as I got older, I would see more and more of that. And now as a married man with my own children, I'm somebody's daddy. Right. There are some things that I want my children to see me as, not just as their dad, but as a man, yes, particularly my son. You know yes, what I'm saying? Yes, so when we are walking in that fatherhood piece, the first thing I would say is not to beat yourself up too much for things that you might have missed because you didn't know any better. Right. But as we know better, we can yeah, do, better, do better, and no, you no. can still go back into your child's life, no matter how old they are now, because you're still a father. Yeah, I think um, for me growing up, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I, didn't, I didn't grow up particularly with my dad around. You know, he wasn't around at all. So becoming married and, and with kids, like Pastor Skip mentioned, yeah, you, you wing it. Right. You just you just trying to figure it out and and you start implementing some of the things that you were taught growing up. But then it takes in that moment for you to realize that some of it wasn't right. <laughs> you know what I mean? The revelation. So, I mean, I grew up during a time where it was, you know, you do as I say, not as I do. Amen. So being a, a father, I, that's how it's supposed to be. So I'm, you do as I say, not as I do. Until I started realizing that my children were taking on my characteristics, my attitude, they respond, especially my son and my baby girl, responded exactly the way I responded. And in that moment, it was like, ah, I am the, the thermostat in the house. Mm -hmm. So I set the temperature. So not only am I saying, you better pray, but if they don't see me praying, then it's, it's a tug of war right. to get them to actually pray. Right. So now it's, it's more so, I'm the example, so I'll constantly say uh, to my children all the time, I'm, not, I'm never gonna ask you to do something that I'm not willing to do. Mm -hmm. So if I'm asking y'all to pray, that means we're gonna pray together. And I've instilled it so much in them without having a father around to the point where if I'm not home at a certain time, my children won't go to bed because I have to be there to pray with them. Mm -hmm. So my daughter's just like, no, daddy gotta be here to pray. And I'm saying all that to say, the importance of actually being the example. Our, our, our voices are strong. Uh, we can set the tone, we can come in, we can yell, we can scream, we can, we can instill fear by saying, if you don't do X, Y, Z, I'm right. gonna do blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But your example is way more than anything because your example is what precedes you when you're not around. Yeah, exactly. And that's what keeps your legacy and your name going because when you, when you're not around, your children is a, uh, is a representation of you. So no doubt. I could be somewhere else and they'd be like, yeah, that's Ryan, child. That's why he <laughs> acting like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I think right. considering I got the opportunity to now be a father, I get to change the narrative as it relates to how I grew up, 
opposed to what I want to instill in my children. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, and I agree with you, Ron. I remember hearing this phrase, and that is, I can't hear what you say over seeing what you're doing. And, and that's why it's so important that our kids see us doing right. So when we ask them to do right, they're not asking me to do, like you said, do something that I'm not already, do, that they're not doing ourselves or we're not doing. But, you know, it, dealing with these times now, and, and y'all want to deal with some deep stuff today, so, because we need to have this conversation as men. Recently, when all this, this uneasiness um, has come up with, with the racial uh, disparities in the world right now, my children have come to me and want to talk about it. And it's been a real eye-opening conversation because, you know, as, as, as children, the Bible says children obey your parents. But as adults, it says honor them. Yes. So now my kids... My, my youngest is 20, and my, my, youngest, my youngest daughter is 20, and my youngest son is 22. You don't have to obey me no more. Now you have to switch over to honor. So in honoring me, this conversation that we're having, I, I can't talk to you like you're a child. Right. I got to talk to you like you're an adult now. Mm -hmm. Now we got to have real, open, honest conversations. Sure. And, and my daughter came to me angry and fearful at the same time, and, and my son, wow. both angry and fearful when this whole George Floyd situation happened. What do I do, Daddy? You know, how, how, how do I respond to all of this? What, I'm mad. How, how can they just do that? To, you know, and I get it. I get it. And I was just as mad, if not madder, than she was. I was, but I cannot allow my anger to feed her anger because I'm at an age where I know what to do with it. Right. I cannot necessarily say they are. And so I had to talk to him. You know, over in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, it says this. For God, and this is the Amplified, for God did not give us the spirit of timidity or of cowardice or fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of sound judgment and personal discipline. The ability that calms, the ability that results in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. And so I have to have a conversation with my children. And the first thing I'm not doing is I'm not teaching them to be afraid of the police. Mm -hmm. I am not teaching my kids to be afraid because again, God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear. Facts. If God didn't give it to my kids, give it to me or give it to us, I'm not about to teach my kids to have it. Right. You're not afraid of the police. What I've taught you is honor and respect. And that's what I'm expecting you to do is honor and respect them. But I don't, I don't want you to ever be afraid of another man. Mm -hmm. They're just men with badges. Now, what they do behind their badge is on them. But you stay in a place of being fearless. You stay in a place of being courageous. You stay in a place of standing on what you know and who you are. And let God deal with things from there. But I'm, I'm not about to teach my kids to be afraid because if you're afraid of the law, and stepping outside of boundaries that the law is giving you, whether they're uh, spoken or unspoken, written or unwritten. If you're afraid of that, where else will fear start to uh, trickle into your life? You may have, you may want to do something amazing out there, but you're afraid because that thing of being afraid of the law or, or, or people in authority has now stopped you from, you know. And so I'm, I, I refuse to let my kids be afraid. But I did tell them, uh, like for instance, my daughter, you want to go protest? Go protest. And if you want, I'll go out there with you and protest. And I did. But I'm not going to let you be afraid to say wrong is wrong. Out of order is out of order. 
you will not be afraid to lift up your voice in a peaceful manner and say that. Now, I do not condone them tearing stuff up. But what we're seeing is in order for a revolution to have to happen, yes, you need Martin Luther King's, but you also got to remember Malcolm X was there too. Exactly. So there's going to be some tables turned. Mm -hmm. There are going to be some tables flipped. There's going to be some drama. There's going to be some drama. <clears throat> but if you listen to drama more than you listen to peaceful, hey, listen, just don't do that. Just don't do that to us anymore. Yeah. We just want you not to do that anymore. Versus, hey, bruh, don't do that anymore. Otherwise, there's going to be consequences if you do. Ooh. Both of those need to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, I hear the ooh, so I'm going to let you go. Yeah, I'm like, ooh, tag me in, tag me in, tag <laughs> me in. I got you, I got you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Amen to everything that you said. In the book of Joshua, there are a couple of scriptures that come in that talks about the disposition. So going back to the identity, uh, with my, my kids, they, I, we're always talking about matters of justice, fairness, equity, what it means to be black in America and how, how somebody sees you doesn't give you the right to diminish your impression of yourself. How you feel about me ain't none of my business right. so long as I know who I am. Right. Uh, Joshua chapter number one, verse number five says, no man, policeman, policewoman, regular citizen, whoever, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. That's God talking to Joshua. And as believers, that's him talking to us. Verse six, be strong, confident, and of good courage. This is an amplified Bible. For you shall cause this people to inherit the land which I swore unto their fathers to give them. Only you be strong and very courageous. That means don't be nothing but that, strong and very courageous. That you may do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Turn not to the left, uh, turn not from it to the left, right hand, or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. Protests wherever. Verse number eight. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written for then you shall make your own way prosperous and then you shall deal wisely and have good success. Have not I commanded you, verse nine, last verse, have not I commanded you be strong, vigorous, and very courageous. Be not afraid. Right. I mean, don't be scared of nothing right. or nobody. Right. Neither be thou dismayed, which means don't let your mind be going through no turmoil and anguish and, 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 and just dis disturbance because of over worry. This ease. Uh -uh, this ease. Right. Kill all that noise. Mm -hmm. Be not dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So you have to have that grounding right. of who you are to be able to withstand against enemies. And it's not just as black people, it's not just the police. When my man was in Central Park telling the lady, hey, put your dog on the leash per the law, I'm right. gonna call the police on you and you're gonna tell them, I'm gonna tell them it's an African-American man. So our race has been weaponized against us right. since 1619, since we came here. Right. So from the enslavement of black people to after that was so-called over, we had 100 years of legalized segregation and Jim Crow, right. then we had some lynchings, then after that was supposedly over, we had to do a bloody civil rights fight that also required some fighting and some drama to the microaggressions and things like that that we face today. So we do our kids a disservice by not telling them, hey, look, this is what you're gonna be facing out there. Right. Now that don't mean you gotta shrink back from it, but just know what you out there facing. Right. Like Aaron Rodgers in football, he don't care if you playing defense. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you in a 3-4, you in a 4-3, you in a 5-2, you in an eight in the box, you in a 46, you playing a nickel package, you got a corner coming off, you got a middle linebacker blitz. I don't care, I'm still three through 16, blue 316, hut hut hike. I'm still playing offense, why? Because I believe I'm still gonna score right. no matter what defense you playing because I'm that good. Right. And that's the kind of mentality we have to have with our kids, letting them know, hey, this is what's out there for you. Right. This is how you carry yourself. And when you interact with the police, there is a certain way you comport yourself. Right. The Bible talks about talking and carrying yourself in a wisdom that your adversary can neither gainsay nor resist. Right. So I'm gonna handle myself in this. I ain't scared of none of y'all. I'm gonna handle myself in this because I ain't trying to catch no lead. But I also understand what justice and equity is, and I'm going to always stand for that. Mm -hmm. I think um, for, for me, uh, I always say in my household, you know, fear is not an option. Like, we ain't, we ain't fearing right. nobody. 
However, we're going to use wisdom. Right. Uh, right now, it's a it's a perfect conversation piece in my household because of the fact that my wife is mixed. Mm -hmm. Her mother is white. Right. Her dad was black. Mm -hmm. right. So then I have my children who are seeing everything that's going on in their George Floyd this, and they're just going on and on and on and out, out the blue. My daughter is looking, and she's confused because I have a white grandmother and I have a black grandmother. Mm -hmm. And the love that they're equally giving me is the same. Uh -huh. So how do I take what I'm experiencing on both these sides? And then I go out there and realize that everybody sees me as a black girl uh -huh. or a black boy. Come on, and they're treating me a certain type of way because of that. But when I'm at home, I got grandma and I got Ghana. I'm not understanding like, how, how do I separate this, or why do people treat me a certain type of way? I'm the darkest person in my house. <laughs> do you right. know what I mean? Right. Just, right. Being, just being honest. So <laughs> having to have a conversation with my 14-year-old my, my son who likes to take bike rides, and I got to sit him down and say, listen, I need your phone on you at all times, mm -hmm. because as you're on this trail, mm -hmm. you right. may get a certain level of treatment because of this and for him he's like uh, dad I, I don't know why I'm going through that but it's like look son mm -hmm. although I teach you not to be afraid use wisdom right mm -hmm. so respect your elders across the board but don't play Mr. Tough Guy if you feel a certain type of way it's time to leave mm -hmm. right. you know what I mean right. and and in leaving it's not a fear statement my 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 other son was wrestling my my oldest one particular day and he ain't stronger than him, but he was, he was trying he to. Was at it, though. So my wife asked him, he getting upset because he couldn't do something particular. And my wife asked him, why don't you just give up? He said, I don't give up. Give up is a sign of weakness. And he was like, <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> on 10. So, uh, you know, I'm in the kitchen area and I'm having a problem. Yeah, we don't, we don't give up. You know what I'm saying? And God is like, no, 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 go correct that. Go, uh -huh. go in there and correct that right now. Mm. So I had to walk in there and, and tell him, tapping out is not giving up, son. It's called wisdom. You mm. realize that you're not going to win this battle. Mm. Right. Stop. Right. right. It doesn't make you a coward. It doesn't diminish you. Right. And I'm saying all that to tie it into the injustice that's going on right now is use wisdom. I think one of the issues that um, we have right now is that's different from back then. They had Martin Luther King and they had Malcolm X. They had two individuals to channel that that anger. Mm -hmm. Right now, everybody is just on 10, and we don't have a particular individual to say, listen, it's okay to be mad. It's not okay to burn that down. <laughs> right. right. You know, we don't have right. individuals to, to, to funnel that, right. that, that anger that's going on. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and you point. know, just listening to you, Ron, uh, the, the, the answers that your children are asking you for, um, you know, you are that answer. And, and, and as you were talking, I was looking at the uh, scripture, Proverbs 23, 22 through 24. And it says, hearken unto the, thy father that beget thee. It says, despise not thy mother when she is old. It says, buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom, instruction, and understanding. Right? It says, the father of, of the righteous shall greatly rejoice, and he that beget a wise child shall have joy of him. So here you go. All this stuff that's going on, they're looking for answers, they're looking to daddy. Right? Mm -hmm. And for all of us, I think that's where the answer lies. Mm -hmm. it, says, it says, buy the truth and sell not. Mm -hmm. So what happened, and has happened, is that the truth has been suppressed. Right. Tell it, sir. You know, now this is an opportunity for everyone, since all eyes are open, multi-generational, multi-race, all eyes are open. Mm -hmm. Now we need the, the truth. Amen. And we can't back down. We can't, you right. know, like you said, sell it. We need to really deal with this. Right. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of truth in, in the fact that, hey, you know what? We have a lot to offer as people. I can mm -hmm. tell my sons that. I say, you can walk in pride, walk with your head up. You know, these are things, these are walls that you can knock down. Mm -hmm. I said, our generation, we tried our best. Mm -hmm. But now when we see the uprising has happened, I see people the age of our children. Right. They out there, they ain't walking Ninja. in fear. Right. 
but oh. sometimes they are walking in lack of understanding because they right. don't have the history because that truth has been suppressed. Right. Fact. Even for those who are non-black or whomever, the truth that they now have had been suppressed. Mm -hmm. right. Black Wall Street, uh, uh, Rosewood, Florida, mm -hmm. uh, Durham, New Jersey, you know, where, where black people were prospering. Right. Or they shut it down, killed them, bombed them, brought airplanes with them in, mm -hmm. in and bombed yeah. them. And, and, and then all of a sudden, we, have, we hear some people saying, <clears throat> without saying another name, uh, <laughs> now that I'm bringing it up, uh, uh, now everybody know it. Yeah, Nobody the president knew about didn't, it. He didn't make the famous. Yeah, he, oh. yeah, he said, <laughs> now I made it famous. No, 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 no. That truth has been suppressed, even such that a, a person who was living in Tulsa, Oklahoma, when he heard about Black, about Black Wall Street and, and someone else, somewhere else outside of his state, he said, like, no, 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 I'm from Tulsa. What, are you, what is this you're talking about? Mm -hmm. He didn't even know. He grew up there. Right. So again, we're dealing with truths that we have to, we, it's our responsibility to make sure we know and everyone know, we pass it on. So then we give them the truth, then they don't have, they can not only not walk in fear, but they can walk with understanding, wisdom, knowledge, mm -hmm. and then that, that's where change comes from. Yeah, it's that applied knowledge is power. And just being aware of all those things, it gives you the incentive with which to go forward in it on. You have to know the why things are happening mm -hmm. as much as the what this is that is actually happening. Right. And I think that to your point, Pastor Giles, all of the truths that have been coming out now has really opened up the eyes. And I think that this being the train or a caboose to the train of a pandemic that we were in, a lot of folks were, you know, pent up and, you know, uh, the distractions of, let's say, sports and other things that have been canceled, festivals, etc they have nothing but time. So not only is the truth bubbling up, but the truth now has a captive audience that yeah. can't do nothing but receive and abs uh, 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 absorb it. Right. So as that's taking place, this could be a watershed moment for the change that yeah. everybody has been looking for as it relates to racial reconstruction. Yeah. And it's an opportunity for the experiment that is America to live up to her promise of equality and liberty and right. justice for all. Right. Right. Because in the face thereof that is injustice, people are calling it out like, hold on, man, I called BS on that. You're gonna have to go ahead and stand in equality in every measure. And even if you are a person of authority, police officer, person of faith, whatever, boss, whatever, there's still a level of equity that you have to carry yourself in. And if you right. don't, you're out of order till you're not exempt from that. And I think that's the biggest thing that I've seen, that everybody is being held accountable as they should. Yeah. Right. Amen. Because um, uh, you, Pastor Ron, I, I was having that same conversation with my kids, also about the, the, the injustice. And they're, as grown men and grown women now, they're, they're saying, well, where's God? Where, where's your God at? Right. And, and I had to explain to them uh, back in Genesis uh, 4 and at even 4 and 10 said, and the Lord said, what have you done? The voice of thy brother's innocent blood is crying out to me from the ground. Mm -hmm. God sees the injustice. Right. God, God that, that injustice with George Floyd and all the other that's going on in our nation, God sees that injustice. God is still there. And because I want them to understand that we still serve a great God. Amen. And, and God is on the case. God heard uh, Abel's blood crying out from the ground from the injustice that his brother done to him. And so God sees that. Mm -hmm. And so God is still on the throne. He's still in charge. And yes, it, it was a horrible thing. It should not have happened. But don't miss out that God is still good. Exactly. And, and go ahead. ahead. Uh, I, I agree 100%, uh, Pastor Todd, with that, because I also believe that God sees it in such a way that everything shut down for a reason, for which a reason. caused the church and the men to get in the field. So just the fact that we are out there uh, is going to change the environment because we are Christ. We are the church. And it is also an uh, important and it's, it's, it's the perfect time to teach our children the actual history behind the why. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Because for my oldest to be 14 and my youngest to be eight and they're seeing uh, what's going on in 2020, you can't talk about 2020 without going back. So they understand Mm -hmm. that this train has been going for quite some time. And the only difference in when my parents were growing up and what they experienced now is everything goes viral. Mm -hmm. So the train never stopped. You know what I mean? It's just now it's public and visible. Everybody sees it, sees it and explaining to them and teaching them to what Pastor Skip was saying, you have a voice, use it. Right. It's okay to use it. But when you're using it, make sure you have the knowledge and the understanding behind it. Don't just get out there and right. with your pitchforks and torches and we're going to burn it down. Like, well, why, why, why are we burning this down? Yeah, right. And you, you, don't, you can't explain the why behind right. it. Understand why people are, are protesting and understand why you see blacks and whites mm-hmm. protesting because it's easy for them to see that and be like, well, why are they out here? Mm-hmm. It's like, well, because they're tired of it too. Exactly, you know, exactly. So, right. And it's not that, I'm sorry, oh, it's, it's not that, and I'm trying to get, get, get us to understand this. It's good to have action, but you need a response. You gotta have a Right. There, there's a difference between action and response mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because we've seen a lot of action. I don't want to don't get caught up in just going out protesting it and doing the action and you don't have a response. Not mm-hmm. a strategy. The, nothing right. behind it, mm-hmm. you know, because because it'd be it'd be here today and gone tomorrow. Right. Which is you know, it'd be forgotten about. It'd be no, another headline news next week. Right. So we have to put a response behind. It. Just don't go out there just because they out there. Exactly. Go out there with a plan, a response right. to whatever right. it is. That has and be proud of who you are. Exactly. You, you are a black man. You are a black yeah. young woman. I want you to be proud of that. That's what I want yeah. to instill in my in my children. I don't want you to be fearful of being black. Right. Right. Because your blackness is not a crime. At all. Right, right. Your blackness is not. That should be a T-shirt. Your, my blackness is not a crime. That's. Right. <laughs> I like that a whole lot. The the. If you make it, listen. We get credit for it. <laughs> and royalties. Right. And right. royalties. That'll be at least eight to ten percent. Right. <laughs> Send us our portion. <laughs> Amen. So on, on on the God piece, the other piece, as we are explaining, you know, where is your God? How come God is the one, because we are all free moral agents, and even beyond the whole thing about race, ethnicity, and you know, gender for that matter, you have an issue in the earth of good and evil. Right. And so there is evil in the earth. There yes. is sin in the earth, and the manifestation of it we see in the unjust killing of people and other things. That's the manifestation of what sin is. The Bible says where sin abounds, though, Grace doth much more abound. Yes, sir. So as we are dealing with this, we are seeking God's face and answers for what is the most appropriate thing to do. And as has been mentioned before, there have been some other folks that have come out as allies that did not come out as allies before. They were complicit in their silence in some of the things that have been perpetrated against black folks. Mm -hmm. So as we are looking at this, let's look at the totality of the picture and not lose focus on what the real is. Things that have been going on don't make God not God no more. Don't make him not effective anymore, any more than a doctor that uh, practices malpractice does away with the whole science of the study of medicine. Right. You just got a hook doctor. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. when you have individuals <laughs> that breach their responsibility, you just had a hook police officer or a hook this or a hook that. Right. That doesn't diminish you know, the totality of what that institution is. Mm-hmm. So what right. we're looking to do is clean up institutions and systemic oppression yeah. that has been around for a while. And the wisdom of God, the spirit of God, and the contributions of individuals who are people of God and their allies can be the answer to that. It right. might not happen overnight, right. but as progress is made, a progressive salvation, if you will, is something that appears to be at hand and I am loving the energy, right. loving the vibe, the, the vibe and I too think that there was some sort of divine reset mm-hmm. yeah. that God is using in this. Not saying that he right. caused COVID-19 or he caused that police officer to kill George Floyd right. but things that were meant for evil, God can turn uh, them right. joints into yeah, so. being for some good. Can, can yeah. I say this real quick? Just to add on to what you both are saying 
because you're saying how you're teaching, you would rather teach the young people to, instead of just have an action, to have a response. And then that ties into what you're saying too, because all of that goes back to us. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what our responsibility is to them because if they're going to have an action and not a response, well, that's where we come in. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Yes. We have history. We have everything that we can offer them right. as father figures. Mm -hmm. Because I have a goddaughter. <clears throat> her name is uh, uh, Destiny Connor. And I, I was watching TV the other day, and I saw her face pop up. And she's an organizer of some of these protests. Uh, so, you know, she, she, we, we hit each other up, we were talking, and she invited me out to uh, the, the last one they had at Juneteenth. So I went out there and I was talking to them, just so proud of, of what they're doing uh, as, as young people. Uh, but then when I talked to her, I said, so, so what's next? And she said, um, you know, we're going to try to get some of these police officers charged with whatever she was saying. And what I realized, I said, okay, now you need some guidance. You right. need some advisors. You need someone to plug in with you, with your energy. Some strategies. And strategies. And so your action will get the proper response. So again, here we are again. This is, this is the answer that the world is waiting for. Right. The fathers. Right. To step up to the plate to say, hey, we want to stand. Uh, because that's where we got, we yes. got we plugged into the resource of, of, of God the Father that we can offer this to you. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you know, uh, when we belittle our voices, when we diminish our voices, when we shrink back our voices or hold back our voices, the world doesn't get who we are and what we have to add. Mm -hmm. And so it's so important, you know, we, 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 got, we got honey in our lips. We, we, got, we got the sweetness of the gospel in us mm -hmm. in a bitter world. Yes, sir. That if we give them the sweetness, it can change the whole flavor of what's going on around here. You know, I want to get into some more things because we don't have a whole bunch of time, but man, it's good, y'all. This is a good conversation. You know, a lot of things we're seeing is privilege, and we're seeing a lot of privilege, and the world may have skin color and economics and as, as a privilege. And that's what they use. But we as Christians also have privileges too that we need to take advantage of. Over in Psalms 84 and 11 in the Amplified, it says this. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows grace and favor and honor. Grace and favor and honor privileges. Mm -hmm. I'm above only and never beneath. That's my privilege. Amen. You know, all these things that God has given us, he'll prosper the works of my hands. That's a privilege I have. Amen. And if we focus in on the privileges we have versus the privileges that the world has, I believe that will also change our mindset because the world's privileges will never override God's privileges mm -hmm. because the world will start giving you things that they didn't want to give you because the Bible says that God can t has the king's heart in his hand and he can turn it any right. way he yes, wants sir. to. Yes, your enemy become, can become your ally because God got a hold to his heart. The people, Amen. your hater can become your greatest cheerleader Amen. because God can get a hold to their heart. So if we just keep ourselves in a place where God can withhold no good thing from us that's an advantage that we have that we can literally change atmospheres, change narratives, uh -huh. change situations versus coming in going, dude, it's that, it's, that, it's that privilege they got. So what about the privilege I got? Right. You know, right. favor ain't fair, but it's my favorite flavor. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I like the, favor, the flavor of favor. I really do. You know, you have no idea how many times I've walked in the place and had favor with people. You know what? And people, just, you know, I just like you. I'm going to help you out with that. Mm -hmm. Yes. I know what that is. That's the favor of God on my life. Amen. Because you didn't have to. Something sparked you to want to help me. Mm -hmm. And that's the favor of God moving in my life to, that has affected you. And so if we walk in the favor that we have. Amen. God has given me favor. Favor and influence with, with, with political officials, officials with, with mm -hmm. elected officials, with, with land and building owners. Mm -hmm. He's given me, and I confess this all the time, I have favor with man and with God. 
And so what's funny with me is when I walk into places and don't get it, there's an expectancy I have of it. I expect favor. Uh You know, for some people, that's like out of the ordinary. For me, it's my norm, dude. Where's favor? I'm looking for it. (laughs) And what I also learn is I have favor with somebody in this room. It may not be who I'm talking to right now. Yeah. I just got to figure out who it is. Just keep having conversations till I figure out where is the lane of favor I'm supposed to walk down. Mm-hmm. But we have favor that we, we get to a place where we're not allowing their privilege to diminish our privilege. Yeah. Man. Going back to identity again, knowing yes, who we are as children of God and the household of faith, that's an expectancy that you have to walk in. You know, it goes back, you know, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. The favor? And that power is that favor. Let me get yeah. two scoops of that favor <laughs> right. with some chocolate and some caramel drizzled all over it. Right. So, but, but having that mindset, because the mindset of expectancy is what can attract that to you. Right. So if I come to you, whoever you are, person, and I'm not sensing that you're not the one that this favor channel is going to flow through, right. excuse me, go get somebody else because I got that right. favor piece. Can that I speak is to your manager, please? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, and, that's, and that's what has to happen. And it can transcend, <laughs> I mean, any situation. I mean, taking it back to law enforcement. Now, I've been, I've been, uh, I've had some law enforcement engagements over the course of my life, as I'm sure every <laughs> black man had. And it probably, if I numbered it, probably was double figures. I've never had the George Floyd situation right, or the right. Tamir Rice situation or the Eric Garner situation or some right. of the other uh, fatal exchanges that were there. Right. Part of the reason is that favor had kicked in. You know, right. one episode I was in a you know, suburban area, a place that, you know, typically doesn't necessarily show that much favor right. to regular folks. And the, the officer pulled me over. It was an episode of racial profile. It was a bunch of cars going, why'd you just signal mine out? But, you know, he had a chocolate chip in the car and right. wasn't that much chocolate chip in the other, you know, cookie right. dough. So pulled me over. You're in, a, you're in the land of oatmeal and you're the only raisin. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oatmeal and, not oatmeal and raisins, oatmeal and raisin. Just right. one. Singular. <laughs> so I get pulled over. And as he's, you know, coming up, my regular routine is, well, Lord, you know, thank you for favor and grace right. and give me wisdom to communicate with this officer. That's what I say. Right. <laughs> Every time I get pulled over. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> I've had some practice with that verbiage. <laughs> Use it if you can. Right. <laughs> Amen. So, so when he pulled me over, he pulls up, he comes up, uh, you know, sir, uh, license registration. You know, so I give him the license registration. Uh, you know, I pulled you over. Yeah. No, officer. You know, uh, your, your, your license plates are expired. I said, oh, really? Okay. Uh, man, I got to get that taken care of. And as he's looking at my license while I'm saying that, he laughs. <laughs> Your license are expired as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I think I'm gonna need backup. I think I'm gonna need backup. Right. So I was riding dirty to the mud. So, so, so but, he, but, he, but he says on that favor tip, on the right. favor tip though, he says, you know what? I tell you what, I'm just gonna give you a warning today. But if you can get that taken care of right away, that would be right. great. Right. Officer, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'll get it taken care of right away. It happened to be on a Sunday. The next day was a Monday I got it taken care of. So what I'm saying is that in any situation, right. you don't have to have, well, what, what about, what about, what about, I don't, whatever your situation is, the favor of God can kick in and can yes. go beyond what the normal or societal norms are on your behalf, right. but you have to be walking with the cognizance or the awareness of that and expecting that right. in every situation, even when you're in the wrong. Right, amen, right. amen. And that, that, that goes, uh, Pastor Skip, of, of and just what Pastor Tim was saying, is knowing who you are right. and whose you are. There you right. go. And, and that's what us as fathers have to get to our children, who they are. Right. and whose they are mm-hmm. so Amen. they can expect that favor they can walk in that grace right. in any situation any troubling Amen. time a good time bad time whatever it is that they need to know when they wake up in the morning i'm a child of god right amen and i am his and i'm a shepherd 
and I'm a shepherd. That's the, and, and that's the key. Yes, you have a heavenly identity, but you also have an earthly identity. Yes. And, and, and that, a lot of times, our children may not know how to tap into their heavenly identity, mm-hmm. but because you're there, they know how to tap, tap into, into their earth. Yes. How many times has your child, when they were younger, felt fear and ran behind your leg as a father? Yes. Because they identified you with safety. And if we have to keep that in our kids, when they think of us as adults, I'm still safety. Mm-hmm. Amen. Because I have to train you that way. I have to train you to think, if anything goes wrong, daddy got you. Bad decisions, good decisions, daddy got you. We, woo, we ain't got a whole bunch more time. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me switch subjects right quick. And we'll close with this subject. Now, as fathers, what's more important? For your kids to learn how to adapt to your parenting style or for you as a father to learn how to parent your different kids? Mm. Um, I think uh, for me, honestly, I think that it's important for you to learn how to adapt to each child. Mm -hmm. I'm a father of four. I have two boys, two girls. I can't handle my girls the way I handle my boys. And I can't handle one of my boys the way I handle my girls. Like all four of them have different personalities. Mm -hmm. So that requires a different type of discipline. Like I can come to my oldest and be like, look, sit down. My, I'm, I can use that same verbiage with my daughter and it will be tear city. <laughs> right. Niagara it, Falls. You know what I mean? So understanding that in the beginning I didn't understand it because I'm like, you know, hey, it's universal. You're going to do what I say. Right. And it's like that's not effective communication because what I'm doing is I'm contradicting myself because I'm instilling fear. Right. in my children opposed to reverence, honor, and respect. So great, let, let me change how I interact with all four of them. Mm-hmm. And the temperature can be set to 75, but how I get it there with each of them is a different journey. But at the end result, is the temperature is still gonna be the same and my house is gonna be ran accordingly. So right. I had to make that just right. Well, for me, it's uh, <clears throat> uh, lessons that I've learned as a father. And to that degree, um, what I feel as though is most important for them to adapt to my parenting style is for me to share, when I share, I share with transparency. Mm-hmm. Uh, because sure. again, there's times where you know, we can be the symbol of perfection, but I know that I'm doing them a disservice is not to share some, say, hey, this, when I was in your shoes, this is how I handled it, right? right? And I realized uh, with one of my boys that uh, as I was sharing in that transparency, he was taking it all in. So when it was his time, and I said, man, why are you doing that? What, what are you doing? He said, well, you did it. <laughs> I said, but I don't do it no more. <laughs> I said, that's what we doing now? We're using my words against me? <laughs> Come on, man. So, so, but I see the, 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 the growth in him uh-huh. as he's saying, okay, uh, Dad, you trust in me to uh, be an example of how you taught me. Right. And now I realize as his father, some things I have to let him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You that's, know what I mean? Yeah. And that's I constantly remind myself, these boys are grown men now, mm-hmm. right? I now, my wife and I now, have boundaries in which we can communicate. Right. Mm-hmm. We can't tell them what to do. Right. Mm-hmm. Boy, no, 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 no. Because it's a boundary line that said, now that I've taught you, mm-hmm and I've been transparent with you, now it's time for you to experience those things and use the word versus your flesh. Right. Which one you want to give into, right. which one you want to see the better results of. Right. And I realized that uh, also, as, uh, to, to Ron's point, even as boys, they're different. My oldest boy, what I did was told him when he was younger, well, this is what a man looks like, and you ain't doing nothing else other than what it looks like, mm-hmm. right? Well. Throughout his life, I didn't realize that I had reduced him and suppressed him to share with me. Mm-hmm. Not until he graduated from high school and he told me, Dad, we got to go upstairs to the art room and pick up my stuff. I'm like, go up to the art room, and all of a sudden, he, I'm picking up uh, portraits and stuff. I'm like, who, who did this? He said, I, I did that, Dad. I'm like, 
boy, you don't, don't be lying to me. You didn't do this. <laughs> Stop it. And the more and more stuff he had in there, I realized, oh my God, you're, 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 you're a creator, you're an artist. Yeah. And I messed you up mm. because I could have supported you in your individuality. Mm -hmm. But I chose to put my umbrella of what I thought it looked like on you. Mm. That was the wrong way to guide him. Mm. So again, for, in order for both of them to adapt to my parenting style, I want to be that example, but I also want to give them the freedom to be who they are. Yeah. Mm. You know, for me, uh, I thank God for my wife because I'm an athlete. I think like an athlete, I operate like an athlete, and I got two kids that are artists. Mm. I got a singer and a writer and my daughter, and I got an actor and a film creator and my son. And I'm talking about sports, and they're looking at me with that zombie look. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then finally my son says, Dad, that's not my thing, that's your thing. Uh. So then I got to turn around and rethink how I address them because I can't come to them aggressive like you would an athlete. Mm -hmm. Because like you, I remember uh, my oldest daughter, Kiana, and Kiana and, and Ron are the same age. And <laughs> my wife can come in the house and scream and holler all she wants. Nothing happens, atmosphere don't change, I can go, hey, can somebody please? The whole atmosphere in the house changes. And so I remember talking to my oldest daughter, and I went into her room. I said, and listen to me. This is how I said it. This is the facial expressions I had. Can you just clean your room? <laughs> Man, they came down hard. And I'm going, what, what did I say? What, 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 what did I say? But I also realized that again, Melba had these two children before I married her. Mm -hmm. And the older two were not used to hearing a man's voice. Mm -hmm. And so now they're hearing a man's voice on a regular basis and it did something to them. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn how to adjust and my adjustment was Okay, baby, I'm going to fall back. Mm -hmm. I'll give all the instructions that need to be done through you. Mm -hmm. Parenting style. Until they get to a place where they're used to my voice, and then I can step in. Right. But I had to learn in that instance, fall back. That's the parenting style. You got. As a father, if I'm going to be effective with them, baby, you can. Now, she could turn around and say, come in here and clean your little filthy room. What's wrong with you? Yes, mommy. <laughs> and it's happening. But I, I, I could not talk to them like that. Yeah. So we have to, like you said, you know, it, it's a balance between you got to adjust to me and I have to adjust to you. Most mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, we hear in marriage, you know, happy wife, happy life. I said, no, 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 that's not how that works in my house. It's happy spouse, happy house. Right. We both got to be happy here. Amen. Yes. You know, and, so, Amen. Amen. And, if, and if that's what yeah. church said, you hear that. Amen. <laughs> yeah. That ain't happy. Nobody get nothing. <laughs> right. Right. And so if, if that's the way it's got to work with us as husband and wife, then that's also got to work with us with the kids. That's right. There has to be a balance. Yes, you got to learn to daddy's communication style, just like daddy has to learn how I need to communicate to you. Exactly. And so there has to be a balance for me. That's, that's me. Yeah, I think balance, just quickly, balance is, I think, the, the key thing. Two examples with my, I have a daughter and a son. And with my daughter, you know, well, first off, you're going to get used to me because I'm daddy. And I got to establish that. And I'll, I'll learn, I've learned to evolve and flow with them based on how they are. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, one example was my daughter was, you know, real young, teaching her how to, you know, just write and stuff. And, you know, she's a lefty. And so I had, <laughs> we got hecklers in the studio. Um, you got lefty so, favors in here. So I was teaching her, you know, I put the, the crayon in her right hand and, you know, she, when, as soon as my hand got off her, because I had my hand, her hand was in my hand, you know, writing out the, the alphabet. And as soon as I took my hand off her hand, she dropped the crayon and picked it up with her left hand. 
Right. I'm like, no, no, baby, you got a, uh, uh-uh, it's right hand. And because she wasn't old enough to look at me like, hey, bro, <laughs> I got you. <laughs> she, I'm a, le- a southpaw, <laughs> bro. Right. You want to <laughs> <laughs> She still was a, a little toddler. She just let me do it again. And as soon as my hand left her hand, she dropped it again and picked it back up. I said, wait a minute, she might be left-handed, which meant that I couldn't force right. Me on her, right? That's good. That's good. I had to adjust to how she is. Josh was also played a couple sports, you know, in high school. Before he got to high school, played some t-ball and some little league baseball. Was a great baseball player. I mean, one instance, he was like maybe third or fourth grade, playing center field. Ball went over his head. He went to the fence, picked up the ball in one motion, shot the ball. Guy was on second base, ran all the way home. He shot overshot the cutoff man. The ball, one hop to home play, got dude out. Mm-hmm. Josh was legit. He had a cannon. He had man. <laughs> but he didn't like baseball. So when he stopped playing, right, that's what I said. <laughs> when he stopped playing, it was like, dude, you, you, got, you, you got a chance really to, you might be made. I had, I've had other coaches, some of his coaches, say, hey, he got, he got potential major league talent. I'm like, Josh, come on, man. He said, Dad, I just don't want, I just don't want. So I was going to pull rank on him. I right. said, you playing baseball, I'm your daddy, I'll bust you in the chest. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I said, wait a minute. I don't want anybody telling me what to do. Right. So I'm going right. to go ahead, and if he doesn't like baseball, Find your way. I'm going to back off. Right. I'm going to fall back and let him do his thing. So I think that the establishment of you know fatherhood, you have it, and I think Part of why our voice reverberates so much is because when we go back to creation, God made Adam first. Right. Then he put him to sleep, then made Eve and all the rest of that stuff. But that means that man is foundational. Right. And when we speak, we're coming with foundation right. that's coming out. And that, I think, as a cosmic level, if you will, or a spiritual overlay to what we say just based on the order of how God has things. But it's that balance, like you talked about, me versus you. I got to peep how you are and adjust my parenting, my daddiness to how you are because I still want you to operate at your peak efficiency. And the way you can do that is for you to have your life curtailed or adjusted to what your natural proclivities are. And let me say this, and I'm going to let you go, Todd. But this works for parenting, period. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mothers as well as fathers. So go ahead. Yes, uh, mine with with my boys it was easy because we can talk just man talk. Mm-hmm. Right. And and my wife we get praised, to fart and scratch yeah, and right, all that, all kind that of stuff. stuff. Right. With my wife, uh, Tanya, praise God, she taught me uh, how to deal with my daughter mm-hmm. and saying the things that a, that a daughter would need from her father, the the touch and the, the attention. And when my daughter got pregnant, uh, she thought that she was just, I don't know how daddy's going to take this. Mm -hmm. And she she shunned away from me. And Tanya was like, you have to go talk to your daughter. Talk to her like a father. Mm -hmm. But I really didn't know because I came up from a quiet house. You go to your room, my mom in her room, my brother in his room. We didn't have sit-down conversations. And so I had to to really go uh, to my daughter and, and... really tell her, mm-hmm. baby, I don't care if you was a hoe on the street mm-hmm. and you had nine, nine, nine kids, daddy loves you. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's powerful. And wherever you at, daddy gonna come get you. Mm-hmm. Right. And to have that conversation, mm-hmm. to, to instill with her what, a, what, a, what not, number one, what a man looks like mm-hmm. right. and how a father loves right. looks like. And for her not to just have the spiritual father, right. but have that natural father that right. says, I love you no matter what. Right. Mm-hmm. Amen. Right. But the great thing about it is, and we'll close, is we are to be an example of God's love. We, yes. should, be, we should be an example of the father's love to our children. Amen. And so, hey, listen, great, 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 great service. Hopefully we helped you, encouraged you. Uh, strengthen you, you laughed, you cried, you aha you did, did the whole emotional gambit. We're so excited about having you with us. Now is the time where you can help us get this message out. We need your assistance. The ability to give, you can text to give, you can uh, uh, 
Write it in. You can send it in. However you want to give, we need your help getting this gospel out. It's so important to us that messages like this, truthful, applicable messages, life-changing messages are out there so we can make people better because whenever we're teaching, wherever we're thinking about, we're not just thinking about us. We're thinking about the people who are listening to us. And we appreciate you tuning in for this time. And we hope something was said that would change your life. And so help us to get someone else's life changed. Share it. Start a watch party. Get it out there. But most of all, help us uh, get, make a bigger platform and get this gospel out there. We appreciate you. We love you. Fellas, have an amazing Father's Day. Listen, I give you permission to do as much of nothing as you want to do all day. <laughs> Enjoy your day, fellas. Um, Glory be to God. Meet us back here next Wednesday at 6.30 for Life in the Word. Also, Pastor Melva does prayer every morning from 6 to 6.30 every morning. Then right after that at 7 o'clock, she does her fresh baked man alive. It is absolutely amazing. You need to be a part of that. And then next week, same bad time, same bad channel right here at 930. We'll be here getting it in. Until then, God bless you. Have an amazing week. And listen, let's go, go be amazing. amazing. All right. God bless Happy you. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day.